how big is a neutrino? That is a very interesting question with a much more complicated answer than you might think. So let's talk about it today on Even Bananas. Hi, I'm Kirsty Duffy and I'm a neutrino physicist at Fermilab. When we talk about the size of a neutrino, you often hear people say that neutrinos are very small or calling them tiny particles. Neutrinos are the tiniest, most intriguing, so small that they just tiny, tiny. Neutrinos are really small. But that's not technically true. Neutrinos are what we call fundamental particles, which means we think they aren't made up of anything else smaller. They're the smallest building blocks that make up our universe. Electrons are probably the best known of the fundamental particles. And technically, in the standard model of particle physics, fundamental particles are defined as point-like, which means they don't have a size, they're just a point. It's a really tricky concept to think about. I imagine it like me dotting a pen on a piece of paper. It's the smallest possible mark I can make on that paper. And compared to me, say, drawing a circle on the paper and coloring it in, the dot has no size, it's just a point. But that analogy isn't perfect. If we look close enough, the dot does have a size and it's much, much bigger than a fundamental particle. Now, even though fundamental particles have no size, we do still have a way to talk about how big or small they are using a concept called cross-sections. Think about this volleyball. When you look straight at it, it looks like a circle. And the area of that circle is what we call the cross-section of the ball. Now, a volleyball has a bigger cross-section than a tennis ball, which has a bigger cross-section than a ping-pong ball. Now, imagine these balls being thrown at you. The bigger the cross-section of the ball, the more likely it is to hit you. So, to figure out how likely a ball is to hit you, you first figure out the cross-section. With particles, we do it backwards. We look at how likely a particle is to hit or interact with something when it moves towards it, and from there, we can calculate the cross-section. Watch out. This is a nice way to visualize the concept of cross-sections, but bear in mind that particles are not actually spheres. Quantum mechanics is weird. So what determines how likely a particle is to interact with another? Well, there are four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the weak force and the strong force. Quarks, the particles that make up protons and neutrons that make up all of our atoms, experience all four of those forces. Electrons and their heavier cousins experience gravity, electromagnetism and the weak force. But neutrinos experience only gravity and the weak force. Neutrinos are extremely light, hundreds of thousands of times lighter than electrons, so the pull of gravity is not strong. And the weak force is, well, weak. So neutrinos really don't like to interact. They generally just fly past things without paying them any attention. And that's why we often say that neutrinos are really small. They're very unlikely to interact with other particles, so their cross-section is tiny. To give you a sense of how minuscule neutrino cross-sections are, imagine that an electron's cross-section was the size of a basketball court. Then a neutrino at a typical energy would have the same cross-section as the smallest pencil dot I can draw. No wonder neutrinos are so hard to spot. But it gets even weirder. A moment ago, you might have noticed I said a neutrino at a typical energy. That's because unlike the size of a pencil dot, the cross-section of a fundamental particle isn't fixed. It actually depends on the particle's energy. A higher energy neutrino will behave like it's a larger particle than a lower energy neutrino. In fact, the highest energy neutrinos we've ever measured have a cross-section 10 million times bigger than lower energy neutrinos. But it's still several hundred times smaller than the cross-section of a typical electron. Now, there are three different types of neutrino, so you might wonder, do the different types have different cross-sections? It turns out we actually don't know the answer to that yet. Because muon and tau neutrinos interact a bit differently than electron neutrinos, it's entirely possible that their overall cross-section could be different too. But that's an area of ongoing investigation. In fact, it's something that I'm hoping to research myself in the future. Even though we know that all neutrinos have tiny cross-sections, the details are still a mystery. Thanks for watching this episode of Even Bananas.